When you, as a country's government, add a particular movie to a forbidden list entitled Video Nasties, you know that just makes people want to watch it more, right? Have you learned your lesson, UK? Name your list something innocuous like Video Snorefests and maybe people will leave it alone. Yes, today's dumpster find is the American-made, originally UK-banned 1981 slasher flick Don't Go In The Woods. Don't Go In The Woods, sometimes known as Don't Go In The Woods Alone, was mostly shot in 10 days by director James Bryan, who is known for... Well, nothing really to most of you, probably. A good portion of his filmography consists of such classics as Beach Blanket Bango, Sex Aliens, High School Fantasies, Whatever Turns You On, Thanks For The Mammaries, Need I Go On, Really? Fine. The Hottest Show in Town, Bizarre Encounters, Swedish Erotica 73, Escape to Passion, The Dirtiest Game. We're done now. Don't Go in the Woods, Sometimes Alone, stars Nick Cleland, Mary Gail Arts, James P. Hayden, Ken Carter, David Barth, and Angie Brown, whom we are really supposed to notice because they put a big box around her name in the credits. Maybe she won a bet? That's the only thing I can think of, because if you look at her bio and her film credits otherwise, there's no other reason for us to know or care who she is. Quite frankly, I haven't heard of any of these people before, and I bet this film has something to do with it. First, we see mountains and forests and a wet camera. A young woman is running through the woods, screaming and crying. She trips in a creek and suddenly the water is red. I'm assuming she's being killed. Considering this director, she could just be entering womanhood but probably she's supposed to be killed. I hope she wasn't too important to the movie plot. Meanwhile, this guy with binoculars and a bow tie gets shot in the face by a red paintball, and oh, I bet that's supposed to be blood. And then his arm gets chopped off. Meanwhile, Craig, Ingrid, Joni, and Peter are hiking through the mountains. Hey, Peter, where have you been? Peter, we were worried. Yeah, listen to that worry in his voice. First is, don't panic. Second is, don't act, whatever you do. Never, never go in the woods alone. Yes, we almost have a title. Okay, so from what I've gathered so far, I think Craig is supposed to be our no-nonsense hiker, Peter is supposed to be our charming goofball, Joni is played by the Buxton Angie Brown, so I guess she's our featured player, and Ingrid is Richie Cunningham. So far, it's kind of like watching a high school play walk through the woods. Ingrid, no animal in its right mind is going to bother us. Don't count on that. I would have said no film crew in its right mind would have either, and yet here we are. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the woods, some woman is yelling at Dale, played by Hyacinth Bouquet. The music tells us this is supposed to be amusing. Oh, wait, maybe not anymore. Nope, nope, they both just got killed or spontaneously died for some reason. They don't really show what's going on. Meanwhile, these four are looking for a cabin or a trail. They can't decide. Meanwhile, in town, blonde James Franco plays a deputy with a new missing persons report. Another missing person report? Have you been snacking on tourists again, Sheriff? The first place they look for the missing person is the local general store. And I think this is supposed to be another comedic moment. The scariest part of this movie so far is watching this random girl roller skate down the hill. Meanwhile, they're still hiking. Oh, no, they stopped now. After dark, Craig tells his friends a scary story about a blood-starved monster tearing people apart. Craig's storytelling is so thrilling, we're not going to show him on camera at all. It's just too thrilling. Meanwhile, Cherry and Dick start to consummate their marriage in a pink Volkswagen van under a picture of Farrah Fawcett. And why not? Cherry changes her mind randomly and then hears something in the woods. Oh my god! What is that? A Jewish shofar and maracas from the sound of it. Dick decides to prove his manliness to Sherry and investigate. I ain't afraid of nothing on two feet. The rest of us on two feet are a little nervous about you having that gun, though. Coordinate, sweetheart. Co it's all about timing. Come out of there, you jerk, you! Okay. Don't open the door, you just got it closed! Dick! 
Suddenly, Dying Dick attacks the van, and someone, I am assuming the killer, pushes the van down the hill. How nice of him to wait until dawn to do so. Once the van reaches the bottom of the hill, the inside erupts into flames. I... Okay. The next morning, Peter awakes from a nightmare, and they continue hiking. This group is really not pulling its weight in the film. Everyone else is dying around them, and they're just trotting through their scenes. Meanwhile, Sheriff Tourist Eater makes a three-second aerial attempt to find the missing person. Probably changed his mind at the last minute, sitting in a jacuzzi in Palm Springs or something. Huh, sounds like a good idea. Yes, yes, all of you, go to Palm Springs, the end. We might as well head back, we're just wasting our time. So are we. Meanwhile, a woman is painting on a canvas while her daughter hangs from a tree branch in a sack with holes. Not sure why she felt the need to go so far away from her kid and her stuff, but whatever. The killer suddenly stabs a woman and her baby evaporates. We're probably supposed to assume the killer kidnapped the baby, but I'm only giving this movie the credit that it deserves. Baby evaporated. Oh my god, meanwhile, Peter runs off like a dork, then freaks out when he vaguely sees something in the woods. Hope I didn't scare anybody. <laughs> no problem. His friends pick on him. Peter, you better bring up the rear. <laughs> Ooh, sick burn right there. Peter finally gets pouty from all of the teasing and goes off on his own. That night, a couple sleeping outside is attacked. Oh look, the black guy that we didn't even know was in the film until just now got killed already. The next day, Peter contentedly cuddles a bunch of sticks as he watches himself splashing his friends. Wait, wait, is this a flashback or is that supposed to be Craig even though it's clearly not? A fisherman happens by and sees Peter and a guy covered in fur above him and then... Wait, 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 what the hell is happening? So wait... The fisherman gets killed by something in the tree, and Peter doesn't notice because he's too busy watching his friends, including Craig, who is not Craig, or too busy watching his flashback. No, wait, he does see the murder. Apparently, the killer is a creepy fur guy living in the woods. You'd think he'd find running with all that gear rather cumbersome. Meanwhile, Craig and Joni are flirtatiously setting up some sort of animal trap and Joni jokingly sets it off with Craig's hand underneath, crushing his hand under a rock. Sexy. While Joni is napping later, Craig takes revenge by tying her sleeping bag up in a tree. Jeez, remind me never to go camping with these sadists. Joni rips a hole in her sleeping bag to escape and sees the killer coming. Craig is too busy being a dork down below to notice and gets killed. After the killer extracts red paint from Craig and randomly chops Craig's arm off, he drags the body into the woods while Joni rips herself out of her sleeping bag and runs away, where we see that Joni's pants magically cleaned themselves. The reverse of what most people's pants would be doing in this situation. Somebody please get the bunny rabbit off the cello. Later, Peter returns and Ingrid almost kills him in panic. I thought you'd never come. A valid complaint from a girl sometimes. There, I said it. They find an empty cabin. I don't like it. If anyone was in there, they would have already heard us. Wait, was Peter always British? Peter tries shushing the bunny rabbit on the cello, and they somehow set off a weird booby trap that lifts up Craig's body. Wrapped in plastic. Shut up, Pete. They run away, and here comes this random guy, and the killer's jangly stick is randomly shoved into the tree. So the guy picks it up and starts walking with it. Peter and Ingrid hear the stick and the bunny rabbit coming, and Peter stabs the person holding the stick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's cool, dude. I think I'm getting better. Nope. No, I'm not. The killer finishes off the random guy, then starts throwing sticks at Ingrid, scraping her face and arm before she and Peter run off. Meanwhile, Joni finds a camp with dead people and the cello hopping rabbit. Okay, that noise is getting really annoying. We made it, oh, we made, we made it! it. <laughs> You're not out of the woods yet. Literally. Ingrid is brought to the hospital, and the police discuss whether they believe the hikers' stories or not. Peter is freaking out because Joni is still in the woods. The doctor tells him to calm down and talks to the police about it. 
While they're not paying attention, Peter runs back into the woods to look for Joni. Eventually, she also finds the cabin. And when the bunny rabbit begins hopping on the cello, you know something is about to go wrong, like setting off another booby trap or getting painted to death with a machete. The police organize a search party to go into the woods and look for everything and everyone. Oh, 80s, look at you in your non-PC humor. Don't worry, this doesn't last long. He gets decapitated eventually. I'm going to the cabin. The sheriff ambles inside and finds an axe and Joni's body. Peter comes towards the cabin and sees the sheriff and Deputy James Franco pulling Joni's body out. They find five more bodies on or near the property. Dr. Maggie joins them and brings Ingrid because she thinks Ingrid will somehow be able to help find Peter. Instead, Ingrid steals a knife and runs off. And this is when the sheriff decides to send everybody home for the night. This is clearly not a police procedural. The next day, the killer attacks Peter. Peter takes off his shirt and uses it as a decoy. The killer is momentarily distracted by it as Peter throws a stick spear thing and stabs the killer. Ingrid and Peter hug, because every good thriller teaches you to do that over the bodies of the dead bad guys that you haven't checked are actually dead yet. Of course, the killer gets back up and chases them down the hill. Peter and Ingrid start maniacally stabbing the killer, who apparently has this hard inner shell. We can explain! As everyone just kind of saunters off, we see the previously kidnapped baby girl playing with an axe. Do not tell me this is supposed to be the lead-in for a sequel. And that's it. Yeah, um, wow, what the hell do you follow that nonsense up with? And what the hell is this song? Don't go out in the woods tonight. You probably will be thrilled. Don't go out in the woods tonight. You probably will be killed. Catchy. Despite the ultra-low quality special effects, the terrible acting, horrible on-again, off-again ADR, and plotless story, this movie apparently has a bit of a cult following. Not only is this available on Blu-ray, there's also a 25th anniversary release. Other than that, though, it still doesn't seem to be a very widely known film. Why is that? Besides the poor quality of everything, I don't know if it really knows what it wants to be. Is this supposed to be a horror? A comedy? Are we supposed to be scared? Are we supposed to be laughing? Because the truth is, whether we're supposed to be laughing or not, we are laughing. This makes for a good time if you like getting some drunk friends together and riffing on a low-budget movie. Was that the original intention, though, or were they trying to make a good film? The fact that they even have 25th anniversary releases and Blu-rays tells me that whether they were trying for it or not, they accept their spot in the so bad it's good category. And that's really all that matters in the end. If the Tommy Wiseaus and Edward Juniors of the entertainment industry would simply embrace their roles in the industry, even if it's not in the original spot they were aiming for, then we'd all get along so much better. Now, if we could convince Uva Bowl to do that without him beating people up. Anyway, if you like a good laugh, no, it's still pretty painful. Tell you what, do not approach unless you are armed with alcohol or some wisecracking friends. Or both. Both is probably less dangerous. Don't go out in the woods tonight, you probably will be thrilled. Don't go out in the woods tonight, you probably will be thrilled.